This manhwa is about a boy, Ning Feng, who manages to make it to the top in a time when reality is invaded by other worlds and everyone must stand up for themselves and weakness is the worst sin. The protagonist approaches a huge blue-blue crystal and if it glows, it must be awakening. But then his classmates start laughing and mocking him because he thought he would turn the whole world upside down. But in the end, he got one star. The protagonist begins to apologize, but suddenly comes a notification that the operator has completed the awakening and activated the system. All his abilities will automatically turn into forbidden dark spells. The guy thinks the words dark and forbidden don't sound good. He decides that from now on, he will be the one to bully his enemies. And while others brag about their powers, he will put them in their place. After a while, he meets a man whose eyes are burning with rage because the protagonist has the highest level card, and he is very interested in the question of how he got it. After some more time, the guy becomes stronger and stronger. Even powerful opponents realize that the protagonist is much stronger than them. The guy himself thinks that it's time to stop pretending because he is the strongest in the world, and he no longer wants to hide it. The main character is studying at the Institute of Supernatural Abilities. Walking along the courtyard of the university, Ning Feng is so enthusiastic about playing a video game that he even thinks out loud. But then he's interrupted by a sudden slap on the cheek from some girl. Wang Yue asks the protagonist what he is doing because it's time to pull himself together and start preparing for the exam. The guy begins to justify that he is both preparing and playing, and besides, he is already 18, and he has awakened only professions with one or two stars. Unlike the girl, because she got a five-star profession when she was still 16, which means there is no point for him to work hard, because he will be able to rely on her in the future. But the angry Wang Yue takes him by the neck and replies that she won't let him do that. Passers-by begin to gather around their pair, who are surprised that the goddess Wang Yue is here and has already returned from a special training session. The students begin to discuss that at 16, to master a five-star profession in their city is a rarity, meaning the difference between her and ordinary people is too great. And then one man wonders who is next to her, and another man replies that it is a known loser who has yet to try a normal profession. People wonder how such a beauty could get involved with such a guy. Then the other answers that they have been friends since childhood, but it is unknown how they became friends because he is from an orphanage. Blue Star is a world where reality merges with the game. Here, anyone over 16 can awaken their powers and become an adventurer. After arriving at the examination center, the examiner announces the rules of the exam. Meanwhile, Ning Feng is wondering why Wang Yue is taking it so seriously. After all, he is not new anymore. This is his third exam. The examiner says that the student whose name is called must enter the testing area and be tested. And then those who can successfully awaken the crystal will have to prepare for the martial ability test. The students around them are discussing how much they want to become mages and arguing about which profession is better. But their conversations are interrupted by the examiner who summons Ning Feng to the crystal. The students start smiling and whispering, joking that if he fails now, he'll be a 100% loser. The protagonist approaches teacher Qi Wei and she calms him down, telling him that they will start as soon as Ning Feng is ready. She asks him to relax and touch the crystal, which the guy does. After a while, the crystal starts to glow, which means it resonates with the protagonist. Awakening automatically gives him basic skills and then reveals that Ning Feng only gets one star in his received ability, Mud Swamp. Qi Wei becomes very sorry for the protagonist and the other students start laughing loudly at the guy, talking about how trash will forever be trash. The teacher asks Ning Feng what abilities he managed to awaken, but he looks at her somehow surprised and uncomprehending when she asks again. And then Qi Wei thinks that this reaction is because this is a big blow to the boy because after so many years he got one star. She then gives him the starting gear and tells him that once Ning Feng puts it on, he should go to the next level. Taking the gear, the guy becomes serious as he ponders what he just managed to hear. While touching the crystal, the protagonist heard that the operator has completed the awakening and activated the system. Ning Feng doesn't realize what system he is talking about, but then he was told that he had gained the abilities Dark Affinity and Dark Magic, as well as the passive ability to use a forbidden spell once a week. The protagonist ponders the fact that the dark power is pure evil energy and the forbidden spells are higher magic, and he doesn't understand what they have to do with him. He is then told that the Mud Bog ability has been discovered and the transformation begins. He doesn't understand what it is, but the transformation is already complete and the ability has reversed the forbidden dark spell, Mud Bog Body. The guy is very confused by the words dark and forbidden, but he thinks that in any case he has a combat test ahead of him, so nothing terrible will happen. The test is that a group of 50 people will go into the dungeon and each fight monsters. 
and it's not allowed to unite into teams. While Ning Feng is putting on his gloves, he notices a sign that says his active ability is forbidden and dark, to which he is very surprised. Finally, when everyone is ready, they head into the portal, and the main character keeps thinking how he wishes the system would explain what it all means. Once out of the portal, the students find themselves in a dense forest and start fighting green goblins. Well, unlike the other daredevils, Ni Feng hides in the bushes to think about strategy. He notices that the clearing is being watched by drones, which means that he can't just use the forbidden dark spell, but there is no other way out either. Just then, the man who is monitoring the students with the drones asks Qi Wei why everyone but Ning Feng is fighting. The girl replies that the boy is in poor health and has late awakened abilities. He only knows one spell, which is not suitable for confrontation. But the man is still angry and says that then she should return him and tell him not to come to the exam anymore. But then the man gets distracted by one of his charges, who talks about the drone being attacked by something and the connection being cut off. He declares an alarm because a powerful surge of power has been detected in the dungeon, and the watcher is asked to check what happened. At that moment, one of the students is terrified that a powerful monster has appeared right in front of him. A huge green goblin wearing a hood and blades orders the brothers to get up and listen to his orders. He says that all invaders must die here, and with those words he is about to go into battle. He effortlessly, in an instant, quickly massacres the drone, blowing it up. The hidden protagonist suddenly grabs his head because the drone suddenly fell on him and left a bump. Suddenly the guy notices that he is surrounded by horrible armed goblins. The henchmen of the leader begin to run at Ning Feng, and then the guy wonders why there are so many monsters in front of him, even with their leader. But then his eyes glisten at the thought that the drone has fallen, which means there's a great opportunity to test the reality of his dark technique. He gets up from his knees and raising his hand up, purple lightning bolts begin to flash around him. Then it gets bigger and bigger, and soon some strange skulls with green eyes appear around. And at this moment, the handy watcher reports that they have lost contact with all the drones, and there is a sudden flash of dark power in the dungeon. Chi Wei at this moment thinks that king-level monsters are capable of destroying an entire city, and doesn't understand where such a creature came from. The leader of the goblins is also terribly surprised to see how quickly his army of brothers is falling. The protagonist himself is surprised to learn what forbidden spells look like, but he thinks it's cool, despite the stickiness and nastiness on his hands. He gets a lot of notifications about the experience points gained for eliminating goblin soldiers. And the leader of the goblins is surprised by such a powerful dark force and asks himself if the man is capable of such a thing. Suddenly he realizes that his affairs are bad because he cannot even move from his seat. And then Ning Feng shouts that they shouldn't have come here. And he kills the leader and gets 6,000 experience points. The level of the guy rises to the 10th level, which the protagonist is very happy about, because in the last year's battle trials, the players at most raised one or two levels. Ning Feng thinks about the fact that there is little experience for ordinary mobs, most of which he got from the elite monster, but he wonders where it came from. Then he looks sharply at the clearing and remembers that there are loot from the veteran goblin, even two orange items. The first is an emblem that increases stats permanently. It also increases dexterity parameters by 10 units. The second epic treasure is the Shadow Assassin's Claws. And even though the guy won't be able to use them, he can still sell them. He realizes that if he keeps this up, he'll easily get a high level and become rich. He's interrupted by a voice that orders all candidates to stop combat testing and evacuate. At first, Ning Feng doesn't realize what happened, but then he looks around and sees that everything around him is scorched. He is surprised, realizing that this is the forces of the forbidden spells, and now there are black and blue holes everywhere. He decides it would be terrible if anyone found out, and so it's time to run. A pentagram appears around him, and a moment later, he and the others appear at the exam site, in front of an observer, who tells the students not to stand still but to return to the city immediately. The man is tense because he realizes that even together they can't defeat a monster above the royal level, and he's not sure if reinforcements will arrive in time. But suddenly he notices that the source of the dark power has suddenly disappeared, and the Watcher is worried that the monster was able to escape from the dungeon. Chi Wei, meanwhile, is talking to someone on an earpiece about how they can't do it on their own, and gives a few more orders. When the protagonist wants to say something to the teacher, she suddenly asks excitedly if he's okay. And having received a satisfactory answer, she asks him to leave the institute quickly, because it is temporarily closed. After a while, Ning Feng and Wang Yue meet on the street to discuss what happened at the university. At the same time, the guy is thinking that the unknown source of power is that elite goblin. He's disappointed that when he was finally able to awaken, the testing was interrupted, 
and at this moment the girl thinks he's so sad because of the incident. Then she says that defense spells can save his life, but they are useless in single pumping, so he can join the team with her tomorrow. Ning Feng thanks his friend for her concern, but says there's nothing to worry about and he can handle it on his own. He thinks he would like to show her his true strength, but it's best not to use forbidden spells in front of strangers. But Wang Yue insists he doesn't refuse and says she will wait for him tomorrow at 8 at the West Gate. She then turns around and walks away, leaving the guy saying something to her. The protagonist doesn't understand why his girlfriend ignores him, thinking how stubborn she is. He realizes that things are bad and tries to think of what to do. One of his options is to pretend to be sick, but he realizes that the girl is hard to deceive. Suddenly he suddenly lights up and one way comes into his head, but the guy is not sure that it will work. The protagonist comes to the Yuan Cheng exchange, thinking that he can buy the right things with built-in abilities to pretend to possess the mud bog ability. He also hopes to equip skills and turn into forbidden spells, and at the same time he thinks of selling the Lui from the elite monster. He is met by a woman willing to help him, and then Ning Feng explains what kind of equipment he needs to buy. But the counselor advises him not to splurge on low-level spells, because they have all sorts of gear with high-level techniques. But the guy brushes it off, and says that he'll only need this gear for a while, so the level shouldn't be high. Then the woman asks another counselor to accept it. She just leaves the protagonist with the words that she does not want to serve the beggar and let the new girl better take care of him. Soon he is approached by a young girl who is willing to help him with his choice. She takes him first to various huge swords for fighting, then shows him a silver gauntlet with different stones and a heavy hammer. In the end, Ning Feng chooses a gold ring with an orange stone and thanks the counselor for her help with the search and then asks her where to sell the loot, whereupon the girl offers to escort him to the appraisal committee. When they arrive, they see a man in a leather chair, with a rather tired look, who asks to see the goods. The girl says that the protagonist wants to sell the trophies, and the guy asks her to help him find out the value of the equipment. Taking the claws in his hands, the man is pleasantly surprised by the orange-level weapon. He begins to describe its main advantages, and admire it. He says it's a great item, and some of their customers will definitely be interested and asks what the guy wants in return, hearing back that the more they give, the better the man calls one of his clients. After a few minutes, he informs them that the claws have been sold, and the client is willing to pay 50,000 crystals for them, and including commission, 46,000, and offers to draw up a stack of papers so they can transfer the money to Ning Feng's account, and after the transfer, the consultant offers to find him everything he needs. At this time, the three women discuss among themselves why one of them left her boyfriend, to which the latter replies that she likes strong and rich, handsome men. One girl interrupts their conversation and asks why the guy who served the woman goes with Master Wang. The other replies that this guy sold 50,000 crystals worth of kybers and is looking for a new outfit now. The consultant who turned down the protagonist, starting to feel very sorry, saying that she was the one who had to serve him and the commission should be hers. After all the shopping, the young girl helping Ning Feng with the shopping says goodbye to him, saying that next time he can go straight to her for help. And then she adds that her name is Yang Xing. The next day, the protagonist confidently walks down the street in his new gear, humming all sorts of tunes. After all, he tried out his new abilities the other night, and the system is transforming them. This means that now he doesn't have to worry about being discovered. Soon he meets up with his girlfriend, as they agreed. However, along with her are four other people, a wizard, a shield-bearer, a berserker, and a priestess. Wang Yue introduces her co-guild mates to the protagonist, and two of them are happy to meet and welcome the newcomer. The two guys, however, aren't exactly excited about the new acquaintance. Ning Feng notices that the guys look like he owes them 80 million. Then one of these men asks Yue if he remembers correctly that she has a second shift coming up and gets an affirmative answer. The protagonist is surprised because the profession can be changed every 30 levels and whether his girlfriend is already on the 60th. He then says that he just wanted to give her a gift and holds out a high-level dexterity potion. Berserk and the priestess are very surprised by this gift as it is an elite potion that permanently increases characteristics. The men start bragging that money is not a problem for him because it only costs 20 to 30,000 crystals and he doesn't spare anything for Yue. But the girl replies that she can't accept this gift and the guy tries to explain that this is an incredibly valuable potion and to get her into the best academy. But Wang Yue doesn't seem to care. She says she doesn't need it and they have to go because there's still a lot to do. The man asks, very surprised if she's really going to waste her time on a loser friend. The girl turns around and yells at him to watch his language. But the man arrogantly asks what he is saying wrong, because Ning Feng only has a one-star profession, and it's a waste of time. The protagonist doesn't understand why this man is so pissed off, and thinks why not use a forbidden spell on him. 
The priestess tries to calm the mage down, but he snaps back, saying that it's none of her business and she should stay out of it. He then shrieks that this agility potion alone is worth more than Ning Fong, and he'd better disappear. However, the guy asks why he's yelling like a rabid dog. After all, it's only a three agility potion. The shield bearer asks if he can show something better, and Max agrees, because if Ning Fung has a rarer item, he will fall on his knees in front of him and beg for forgiveness. Well, if he doesn't turn out to have anything like that, the main character will kneel down. Then the guy unexpectedly pulls out a vanguard emblem that permanently increases characteristics and says it's his gift for Yue. The whole team is greatly surprised at how an item that permanently increases stats by 10 can even exist. Then the guy says that the only way to know for sure is to use it and holds it out to his girlfriend, saying that there's nothing to worry about because he found it at home. Yue agrees after the priestess and shield bearer ask her to do it quickly to see if it's true or not. The girl takes the emblem in her hand and everything around her starts to turn golden orange and the team members are very surprised. The two men who previously laughed at the protagonist are incredibly surprised and ask where he got such a treasure from. Well, here is Ning Feng's response only to say that when he apologizes, let him speak louder or he has bad hearing. When the poppy starts to object something against it, Yue asks if Mr. Chen really wants to retract what he said. Noticing his team's reaction, he does bow to the guy. But after waiting for him to even apologize, the guy says goodbye to everyone and leaves. Wang Yue already starts to apologize, but the guy interrupts her and says that it won't affect their relationship in any way. You besides, she shouldn't have accompanied him. He would have been happy if she had passed the second shift and got into a better academy. But the girl continues to exclaim about how he shouldn't treat himself like that. So she pulls out some kind of book and holds it out to the protagonist saying it's a gift for him. It's a volume of spells that he can learn once he reaches the right level. The guy notices that the books are of purple quality and assumes that they came out to her in crystal, but the girl says that she doesn't have enough money to thank him for the emblem. At which point Ning Feng smiles and says she accepts the gift then. For a while the friends find themselves in a dungeon, a sinister graveyard with lots of zombies. But Wang Yue quickly deals with them with his bow, hitting the targets. At this time, the protagonist thinks that it's a pity that he has very little experience and that he can't tell his girlfriend that he's already level 10. Suddenly, the girl's phone rings and she is told that the team has received news that a powerful boss is about to appear in the graveyard. The priestess says that because of a pretty rare event, and so if Yue wants to go, she can go. The mage says she has to go, because otherwise how will they get the loot? Because the fallen countenance is a pretty rare enemy, and the right item will fall from it. The girl looks at her friend, but he says it's no big deal and that she can go, because he can pump later. Then she asks her friend to go back to the safe zone and wait for her. In parting, the guy asks her to be careful and as soon as she has some free time to visit him. Ning Feng is actually glad that he's alone because it's time for him to try to fight a strong boss. The day before, he had learned two more abilities and could now use each forbidden ability once without cost. But unfortunately, he only has three ability bars and Wang Yue's book requires level 15, so he can't use it yet. In the ominous graveyard, a strong skeleton and his minions have already appeared. Some troop says that the main boss will appear in the tower in the heart of the dungeon and they discuss strategy. However, here they notice that some squad has already pulled ahead and they wonder how they got through so quickly. But then one of them realizes that it's Wang Yue's guild, the Rugged Lion Guild. And then the other one says that the others have no chance of getting ahead of them. The squad is indeed doing their best to defeat the monsters and they are doing well. The priestess asks the shield bearer if he noticed that Yue has gotten stronger and he replies that of course he has because 10 dexterity is no joke. At this time, the protagonist already appears in the heart of the dungeon using a spatial spell. Why he uses the active slip 8 ability to break through space and enter the world of darkness. Finally, a powerful looking boss in the form of a skeleton in armor appears at the right place. But he suddenly notices that Ning Feng is already waiting for him and asks why he is late. After that, the boss unleashes his magic at him leaving only dust after the guy. The huge skeleton asks about how the cocky adventurer dared to show up alone. Before he can even finish, however, the protagonist swoops down on the boss, saying that he just doesn't want to share the loot with others. He then uses the celestial rain ability, summoning a rain of fire that rains down on the skeleton. After an easy victory, the protagonist receives six notifications of receiving 200 points to reprisal the infernal warrior. And then he receives a notification that he has received 50,000 experience points of reprisal of the fallen lich and gets level 30. Ning Feng begins to collect a mountain of loot, but he's upset that the two spell books are not unique to mages, but they are worth a lot of money. The guy decides to pick up a purple colored emblem because he could really use it, even though it slightly lowers his stamina. 
then he substitutes, and especially the item Lich Emblem. And now when he changes, he can unlock the hidden profession Necromancer or activate the secret ability God of Magic. Ning Feng thinks that hidden professions are very rare because they are not given at birth and wonder whether this emblem can really open hidden professions. He decides that a real man would choose God of Magic, so he does the same. Meanwhile, Wang Yue's squad doesn't understand what happened and where the terrifying purple aura is coming from, and they decide to retreat. One of the members tries to object to something, but Yue asks if he wants to put them all in danger. The girl decides to warn her friend, but he's already texted her that he had an emergency and left. Meanwhile, the protagonist climbs the tall stairs to the Hall of Professions. Upon entering, he sees a huge hall and thinks that no one is here. However, when he turns his head, he sees an administrator who greets him and asks him if he has come for a job to change professions. Having answered that he is, the girl asks him to give all his data, name, age, profession, and so on. Meanwhile, the woman thinks about the fact that the guy does not have the best results, as he is only awakened at the age of 18. She then asks him to come with her to show him the magical professions. She leads him to a circular room with many blue crystals and asks him to just follow the instructions. She then meets another man who tells her that he and his team went to a new alarm and investigated as the cemetery was severely damaged, but the source of the force has yet to be identified. The administrator asks if this is the second day in a row that this has happened, and the man replies that this is why his superior sent him here. Suddenly, a strange black aura appears around the girl and her gaze becomes more serious. Ning Feng at this time is familiarizing himself with the first mission of the Necromancer with test level A, easy. While scoring is looking at the first mission of the God of Magic with level C, difficult. The guy is surprised that there are only two branches to choose from, but decides that he will start with the Bond of Magic because apparently it's a pre-mission. He then decides it's time to go back. And as he walks down the stairs, he's encouraged that he's on his way to a hidden profession and that he's even been given a difficult level mission. He feels that there is no need to worry as he still has three whole days to complete the mission. As he approaches the exit, he says goodbye to the female administrator. But then he realizes that this is not the same girl who originally met him. At this time, something strange is happening in the cemetery. A woman, magician loner, is going to do something together with her two men, one of whom tells the other that the existence of this organization is a big secret. He also says that all loners have special hidden professions that allow them to use the power of darkness and in battle give out the most important tasks. The female administrator says that there are so many powers of darkness here that it is palpable even after dispelling. She also reports that she has not found any clues, and apparently the source of the force is already gone. Plus, she has little information to draw a clear conclusion. The man explains that he has been receiving frequent reports of strange anomalies in the dungeons lately, and that perhaps these portend disaster, and asks if this case could be related to them. The woman replies that it's hard to say yet, and she'll check with her superiors and request backup, her opponent marveling that even the legendary Lone Shadow can get a headache. The other man asks if she can confirm that the culprit behind the outbreak of power is a monster. However, the girl realizes what he's getting at and asks if he means to say that the causes could be a mutant like her. And the man immediately apologizes, saying that he didn't mean to offend her with his words. The loner replies that the threat level is beyond royal. The human body is simply incapable of enduring and controlling such a huge amount of the forces of darkness. Then the opponent asks if he correctly understands that in their city hides an incredibly powerful bridge, capable at any moment to make a real disaster. And the girl confirms his guesses, saying that she fears that he is hiding somewhere in the shadows, so they need to find him soon. At this time, Ning Feng is already at home. He closes the curtains, thought that the darkness helps him relax. At the 30th level, four more skill panels open up, so he decides to study two books by Wang Yue first, after which he gains the skill Enchant Shield, and the ability Mud Defense. The cargo defense is activated when it takes damage, and the strength of the shield is equal to the maximum amount of damage that the mortal body made of mud ability can deal. The guy is happy that forbidden spells can be combined with low-level techniques, and it's a shame that he has a new defense spell and is not afraid of simple damage. However, he still has four ability panels, so he needs to go to the exchange again. Upon arriving at the Yuan Cheng exchange, Ning Feng recognizes the consultant who didn't want to help him last time, but this time she approaches him, greeting him, and the guy replies that he's looking for Yang Xing. The woman replies that Yang Xin is now accompanying another client, so today she will be his assistant. But surprisingly, the protagonist replies that in that case, he'd better look for himself. 
the consultant gets angry thinking about how he dared to reject her and how she is worse than Yang Xin. She starts to say that her job is to help clients, so it's okay, but the guy doesn't listen to her. Suddenly, Yang Xin comes running in. Ning Feng greets her and asks if she's done yet. While the girl replies that she wasn't busy, she was just having lunch, but a co-worker told her that he came, and she rather ran over. The protagonist apologizes for interrupting a proper lunch, and as compensation invites her to dinner in the evening. After a little while, Ning Feng is already talking to Mr. Wang. They say that he would like to sell two skill books and purchase new abilities. The latter replies that he will arrange everything, and Pro Yang will take care of the protagonist. Meanwhile, he finds it suspicious that last time the guy brought orange weapons and now purple books, and thinks he should follow him. After sitting in a restaurant with Yang Xing, the young man asks the waiter to bring the bill, but the girl says that she has already paid everything. The guy wonders if he was going to treat her, but Da replies that she has a good reason to pay for tonight's dinner, so there's nothing to worry about. And when Ning Feng asks what she's talking about, she replies that it's a secret. When Ning Feng asks her what she's talking about, she says it's a secret. She refuses the offer to walk her home, saying that she has somewhere else to go, so she'll call a cab. After saying goodbye, Yang Xin gets into a cab and is asked to take her to the second city hospital. She thinks about the fact that thanks to Mr. Ning, she has earned a lot of money and was able to pay for her father's treatment. But the thought is interrupted by an unexpected situation. A cab driver dies right in front of her eyes. Various scary monsters are wandering around the city, which wreck cars. The girl manages to open the car door and falls out of it. She does not understand what is happening, and from where in the safe zone appeared monsters. And at that moment, a huge monster with red eyes looms over her. A dark blue portal appears in the sky and a man emerges from it. Yang Xin uses her abilities, trying to defend herself from the creature's attacks. But they don't help much as she only has one star, so the monster swings in to finish her off. But its head flies off to the side because some man chopped it off with his sword, thus protecting the others. After making sure that the girl is okay, he tells her to leave quickly and find shelter. But as Yang Xing runs away, the man notices that everything around him is beginning to rot, the dungeon merging with the real world. He so realizes that with these monsters, ordinary people can't fight them in any way. So the assumptions in the cemetery seem true. Suddenly a man flies at him, and luckily the soldier manages to parry. He asks the unknown man if he is a mutant, but the man asks if he looks like scum. He then says that he is actually the chosen one of a dark force. The soldier is surprised at what chosen one means and realizes that they haven't met anyone like that before. But realizing that there is no time for reflection, he engages in combat with the unknown. However, during the battle he realizes that things are bad as the enemy's strength is higher than on the third shift. The battle continues and the chosen one of darkness shouts that he's incredibly strong. Treading on the ground, he feels a stream of energy coming from underneath. But then he is interrupted by a voice from outside telling the man to stop being so narcissistic. It was he who gave him the power, and without it he would be just like his relatives, a miserable earthworm. And he tells him to prove his usefulness to him by sacrificing all the people of the city, and this will mark his appearance to the world. The man worships the unknown creature and says it will be fulfilled. Coming out of the restroom, Ning Feng notices, even though he has just stepped away, something has already managed to happen outside. He is suddenly attacked by a strange creature, ready to finish the guy. But then suddenly a block appears from the ground, which chops the enemy in half. This happens because the protagonist is using the side spell, Wall of Earth Spikes. And because he's spent on a weapon with purple skill, it also enhances his earth spells. As he walks outside, he sees huge mountains of corpses and horrible pools of blood. And then the main antagonist, who is surprised that there are still small bugs left behind. Ning Feng are surprised by a strange man with a huge blue hand, not realizing what he is. But before he can even do anything about it, the man grabs the guy with his huge hand. However, the hero forms a shield near himself, with the help of which the enemy's grip is weakened. And the antagonist does not understand how the guy managed to block it, and the attack is very powerful. The creature from outside, which gave power to this man, begins to talk about the fact that Ning Feng's dark power is very powerful. And then it's all saying that the guy's threat level is higher than his, and he can even feel the breath of death itself coming from him. At this time, the protagonist thinks about the fact that the caller looks pretty strong, and it looks like he's going to have to cast a forbidden spell in the city. Having cast it, the enemy's hand begins to rot and breaks. When the man turns to his master, he replies that he is on his own, and he disintegrates into small pieces that flutter in the wind. The other creatures tell each other to retreat immediately and close the portals. The guy's enemy is exhausted standing in front of him, barely talking about the fact that his precious power has reached its limit. And the protagonist begins to grin and sneer evilly, 
The so-called mutants are those who, in the process of awakening, discovered the hidden profession of darkness. They have the ability to use the power of darkness, which gives them power superior to that of standard professions of the same level. But what happens if they lose the shelter provided by the power of darkness? It is best not to know. After dealing with one more enemy, the protagonist says that it's hard to deal with the likes of this one. A little tired, he is glad that at least he can use all his power without worrying about defense. He decides to quickly pick up all the loot of the land before anyone notices him and thinks it's time to hurry home. At this time, two girls from a special secret unit are walking through the streets of the city, looking at the destroyed buildings. One of them talks about how the monsters have retreated and the gates of the secret realm are gone as well. Then the other thinks about first the two trash destruction spells, then the secret realm invasion of reality, each event suddenly appearing and then also suddenly disappearing wondering what the enemies want. She then asks her partner what happened to the other places, and the latter replies that the situation is mostly under the leader's control, except for heavy losses. Then the girl with glasses suggests going there anyway and checking everything out. At this moment, Duan examines the enemy who was hit by Ning Feng. He is thinking about who had the power to cast such attacks and spells on him. Well, he is interrupted by two girls from the secret who told him not to move and asks who he is. The man replies that they can relax because he is a member of the Cloud Beyond Illusions, and to prove his words, shows the emblem. One of the girls asks if Clouds Beyond Illusions is an unofficial organization composed entirely of fighters, but that gets an affirmative answer. She also asks about why he showed up here, since from what she has heard their operations tend to be clandestine in nature. The fighter then replies that he showed up here because of him, and points to the dead man. This guy was a regular member of their squad, but then he betrayed the organization. He helped the secret kingdom in organizing an ambush on their camp, and in the end, except for a few survivors, everyone else died. Then one of the girls asks if this isn't the same thing that just happened, but the other asks the guy if it could be that this guy's death contributed to the invasion of the secret realm. But the fighter asks the girls if their group massacred this guy, but they reply that they didn't and don't know who would do such a thing. The woman thinks about the fact that the guy must have liked to hide in the secret space very cleverly, because she tried to find him several times, but he always managed to slip away. She also reflects on the fact that despite the power of Captain Joe's third transformation, the entire army still died in an attempt to directly destroy the enemy and prevent the invasion of the secret realm. Both fighters ponder whether the city really has such formidable figures. The man then leaves, saying that he wants to try looking for something. Meanwhile, Ning Feng is already at his house, happy to have picked up two orange quality items for the fighter profession, the top and bottom of the Eternal Glory set. But the guy didn't see one on his enemy and thinks that the guy couldn't meet the level requirements. Otherwise, he would have to rely on using a forbidden spell to win. Ning Feng also found a pendant that looks unusual, but it doesn't have any quality and the information is listed as unknown. Looking at the pendant, he thinks that it can't contain an ancient deity or something else. But he's wrong, because right at that moment, with the pendant, some entity can spy on him. The monster is glad that he acted quickly and closed the secret realm in time, hoping that they didn't draw attention to themselves. Suddenly, however, the guy looks right at the creature and repeats that there can't be an ancient deity or anything else in the pendant. The guy gets really freaked out and orders to cut the connection because he can't be allowed to know their location. The deity says the guy really scared him and wonders how the guy sensed his presence. Meanwhile, a girl from the secret squad comes to visit the fighter in the hospital, and the guy says that there was a fighter on the battlefield who came to their rescue. As soon as the enemies saw him, they immediately opened a portal to the secret realm and fled. The woman replies that she can clearly sense that this man's strength is as strong as her own. The man next to her says that the man who was able to escape capture was suddenly destroyed by the mysterious figure. The loner adds that it's possible they were just passing by or maybe living in seclusion, but what is certain is that the mysterious figure is not officially registered, and also aside from traces of normal magic, there were no special findings on the battlefield last night. The fighter says that it would be comforting if the mysterious figure settled among them. The mere thought of it brings a sense of security. The man with the glasses suddenly informs them that he has had a pretty good idea. Since last night, the remnants of the forces of darkness should have been left on the battlefield, and of course the enemies are monsters from the secret realm. Then he assumes that, the mysterious figure might also be a mutant. However, the two destructive spells did not result in any casualties. Without letting him finish his thought, the wounded fighter says that it's impossible and the man is just getting too worked up. The girl next to them begins to think about the fact that really everything could be much simpler. 
At this time, the main character goes on a mission for a change of profession. He comes to a place where there is a huge shining temple realm, but Ning Feng doesn't even realize that a member of the Cloud Beyond Illusions is following him. Since this man arrived at the Yuan Cheng Exchange a few days ago to see Mr. Wang, they shake hands. And then Wang says that he heard that the guy would like to purchase the fourth transformation kit. Meanwhile, the female counselor is thinking that with a man with such a high level, good looks, and skillful techniques, there would be no worries in the future. Wang explains that it just so happens that a longtime customer just called and wants to purchase the fourth transformation fighter set, but he currently only has two items. The guild member doesn't finish listening and asks where he can find the man. However, the man calms him down by saying that it seems that this buyer has some other things to do today, so he won't be able to come. The man thinks that the fourth transformation two-piece set, the top, and the pants all match the key information, and there is a good chance that the outfits described by this man are indeed the master's legacy. So he asks Mr. Wang if he can give him the whereabouts of a longtime client and adds that he can pay for the information. The latter thinks the guys are in cahoots, because as soon as Ning Feng said he wanted to sell the suit, and this gentleman showed up at the door asking about it, and that's almost supernatural. Eventually, Wang replies that he remembers that that customer mentioned that he had some business to take care of in a neighboring town, so he'll call them again to confirm the information. After the guy leaves, Mr. Wang still checks with the consultant to make sure she was sure to escort him. The woman then asks if he is okay, as he looks very tense. The man replies that he asked someone to inquire about Ning Feng's past and it turned out that his parents were people of ordinary professions. They died in an accident when the boy was young. He attended high school and only awakened the one-star profession at the age of 18. The woman says that from his appearance, she thought at first that he was rather formidable, indeed untalented, but she suspected there was something wrong with him. And she asks where he could have gotten the items he was peddling in their establishment, because with such a profession, it's impossible to get such good stuff. And Wang replies that that's the problem. The counselor thinks about the fact that that customer, looking quite displeased, then asks if Ning Feng stole the suit he sold them. The one replies that it's not a fact that it could be stolen, but it was probably obtained illegally. It looks like he messed with someone he shouldn't have messed with. The woman says that fourth transformation is even considered the best in Beishan province and thinks over the fact that the staff was definitely stolen and it would be quite a fun entertainment. Currently, Ning Feng is already close to the Radiant Temple Realm, and the guild member keeps following him. He thinks that it's unbelievable that someone so young could prevent the invasion of the Secret Realm, since even someone as powerful as his teacher was defeated by the boss of the Secret Realms. And according to the information, the Master's legacy might be in his hands. And if Ning Feng himself is not powerful, then it should be the person who covers him. Upon approaching the realm, the protagonist sees different fighters fighting some creatures. He then starts changing his gear, and the spy thinks that judging by the guy's equipment, he must be dressed in something cool. But the protagonist is reincarnated, and he wears the most ordinary suit. The man is surprised, thinking that it looks too plain. The guy looks just like a student who hasn't finished school yet and thinks it might be a disguise. After all, given his age and his rookie disguise, it won't raise suspicion, allowing him to blend in with the crowd easily. And if he's intentionally covering his tracks, the guy might try to hide and to avoid alerting him, the spy can't follow him too closely. So he decides, as a precaution, to use the spiritual guidance skill to mark his location. And Duan decides to mark him with his typical appearance. He thinks about what Ning Feng is doing here if the monsters in the secret realm aren't particularly strong. But the protagonist ignores the weak creatures at the entrance and just walks inside the castle. Before he can even react, he is attacked by a huge creature that lets fire out of its mouth, but a shield instantly appears in front of the guy. The spy is horrified that the guy has absolute defense, which seems to be out of reach. He also notices that all the monsters start avoiding the protagonist and realizes that this guy is quite unusual. Then the spy notices that Ning Feng is approaching a huge statue. He wonders if the guy is going to fight the boss alone and doesn't understand why a powerful man like him would mess around with such a low-level boss. The statue in turn does not make a sound or even move, to which Duan is also very surprised. So the protagonist calmly passes by, thinking that this is not the guy which was mentioned in the manual for the task. And when the guy reaches the right place, a creature with golden wings and armor appears in front of him. Its eyes light up with a yellow color and it immediately flies upwards. Ning Feng, watching his opponent's every move, wonders why he abruptly started to run away. And Duan is once again surprised after realizing that it might be a rare hidden boss. Remembering the terms of the mission, 
that he must enter the temple of the kingdom and get the emblem, he decides it's time to act. He is not surprised that this is a high-level mission, because if a one-star man faced this, he wouldn't be able to handle it. The boss at this time panics and thinks over the fact that the guy's appearance is absolutely horrible, especially since he has nowhere to escape to. Ning Feng puts his hands forward, ready to use his strength, after which he uses the dark forbidden spell, Thunder Descent, causes a powerful thunderstorm, drawing the wrath of the heavens, which easily sizzles the boss in the blink of an eye, not even giving him a chance to parry. Duan sits on the ground from sheer astonishment and is even at a loss for words. He has never seen such world-destroying magic. It's just too terrifying, after all. The boss's strength is undoubtedly superior to his master. So could it be the legendary power of the eight stars? Ning Feng thinks that before achieving the first transformation, he has no way to increase his rank even more. And all these experience points are just a waste of time. But then, he realizes that it doesn't matter. After all, he has the emblem, and he just needs to go back and complete the mission. The Orange Rarity Divine Emblem gives plus 8 attribute points and a 100% recovery effect. Then, when the guy decides it's time to use the teleporter, Duan runs out of cover and asks him to wait a minute. The protagonist begins to worry about how much this man has seen and where he even came from. The spy notices that the guy's facial expression seems very disgruntled. Then the man asks him not to get angry and let him explain everything. However, suddenly they hear a loud and horrible siren sound. And Ning Feng suggests that they get out of the place to begin with and then discuss everything in peace. A moment later, the men are already sitting under some tree in the mountains. The boy asks if Duan has been following him the entire time he's been traveling. He begins to apologize, saying that he had no other intentions. He just wanted to confirm the information. And if he hadn't seen it with his own eyes, he never would have believed it. He says that even though his master was formidable, he only paid with his life to temporarily isolate the invading kingdom by allowing the traitor to escape, and the enemy persisted in using people as sacrifices in an effort to break the seal. And so Duan pursued him mercilessly, but to no avail. Oh. But at this moment, the protagonist thinks about the fact that the spy is a four-star transformation master. And if he didn't reveal himself, the guy wouldn't even notice the man. And Ning Feng is sure it's because his level is too low. At this time, Duan is frightened by the expression on the protagonist's face. He's afraid he's going to finish him off to keep him quiet. He starts saying that he's incredibly grateful to the guy for helping him avenge his master. And if Ning Feng needs anything, he'll help him. The protagonist realizes that this man has a decent level and works alone, so a good relationship with him could be helpful. The guy says he wants no one but him to know about today's events, and Duane promises to keep his mouth shut. The man knows that Ning Feng's power is attributed to the enormous power of darkness. But despite that, she spared the innocent, and successfully repelled the invasion of the secret realm and saved the entire city, and that deserves respect. The protagonist offers to stay somewhere in the city, as they have nowhere else to go. But suddenly the phone rings, and the guy picks it up. He hears the voice of his teacher, who asks where he is now. Key informs him that he is now not far from the city and is about to drive back, and asks if he needs anything, and adds that when he gets back, she wants to discuss something with him. The guy is alarmed by this call, and starts to wonder why the teacher called him all of a sudden. Meanwhile, Chi talks about how Ning Feng is already preparing to return. The woman from the secret squad says that if not for the timely investigation, this student might have gone unnoticed. The teacher says that the boy has a good character and is very smart in his studies, so he is not a bad person. Singleton recalls how it was mentioned at the meeting that this was an initial situation that would continue to be investigated, and they hoped it would get the attention of higher authorities. She also asked them if they thought the two destructive spells that appeared in the city could have been caused by mutants. The members of the assembly look at each other in confusion as to why the girl asked them such a question. One of them replies that she herself is a mutant and asks why she would ask such a question. She says that those who use the power of darkness must pay the price, and the stronger the mutant, the greater the price to be paid. Subsequently, a person can become a new kind of monster, or if not careful, their fate can be worse than death. So a king-level mutant simply cannot exist. Here one of the men says that only she could come up with such nonsense as a king-level mutant, and says that with stories like that, she should have built a career as a screenwriter. To which the girl replies that she's just considering all the options, and whether or not to listen is their decision. The man says with a chuckle that it's not worth dodging or making excuses, because it's incompetent of her to hide something and starts laughing, saying that if she's right and there really is a king-level mutant, he'll chop off his head and she can use it as a soccer ball. 
Then the older man informs her that they've already sent an investigation team to the city, and they hope to cooperate with the loner, but the team will take over all her duties if necessary. The woman objects, does that mean they don't trust her? But she is told that it's not a matter of mistrust, and she's just being asked to be patient. Suddenly her assistant bursts into the office saying that she has news for her captain. She tells of a destructive force hitting the realm of the Shining Temple, but luckily no one was hurt. After telling all the teachers about it, Key objects that apparently when they were investigating, apparently there was a mistake. But the loner confidently means that all the information is definitely correct, and also compliments that this is all getting more and more interesting. At this time, Longbow City is covered around by a blue shield. Ning Feng and Duan stand in the crowd of people and listen to everyone discussing about the defense field. Someone even talks about how this dome scares him. But the Guardian replies that there's nothing to worry about. The protective shield has been activated at a high level that will block the dark forces outside and won't affect the city area. The guy thinks that the commotion he just caused was too loud, since the highest alert was immediately announced and apparently he'll have to wait until things calm down to take the car home first. At this time, some beings come out of a strange portal and ask if this is the human world. They wonder why humans decided to activate the magic shield. Well, another creature replies that humans always prefer to hide. Then a whole army of monsters show up, whose prepper says that unfortunately these human things won't help keep them away, and they are going to give them a big surprise by attacking the population. As the humans raise their heads, they see a pack of creatures coming through the dome. The people start screaming and try to run away somehow to save themselves, but some are already injured. The guards are very surprised and don't understand how the monsters could get through the shield. Panic breaks out in the city. People start to jostle. The guards ask to be more careful because they are afraid of hitting civilians with their swords. Duan creates his own mini shield, thus protecting himself and Ning Feng. The man says that this could be another high intensity invasion, just like last night. Duan asks if they should take any action. But the protagonist asks in response if the man has any solution on how to handle this. But the man doesn't understand why he should ask for his solution when he can easily deal with the problem himself. Then he gets the idea that the boss just wants to test him. So he talks about how he will solve it now, and the guy can provide it to him. At this time, Ning Feng thinks that since there are already a lot of people around and he won't feel comfortable using his power, so decides to let him handle everything. Suddenly the main monster appears, and Duane instantly creates a shield around himself and his new boss. Despite the dire wolf using both swords and arrows, nothing worked. One of the wanderers fearfully asks how it is possible that they can't even get close to him. The monster, however, says that it is a disappointment to him that there are no strong personalities among the humans. He then begins to head towards the civilians as they try to escape. He then swings his sword, saying that all humans are useless. However, he is stopped by Duane, who stops his strike with his sword. The man says that even though his boss doesn't need protection, it would be wrong of him to sit back and watch the others deal with this alone. He then talks about the boss providing it for him, and Ning Feng asks him to stop calling him that because it embarrasses him. The monster is surprised, saying that apparently not all humans are useless. Then they start fighting, and with the first punch, the man pushes the monster away, so much so that he coughs up a blue liquid. Duan then pulverizes the creature in a moment, cutting it into thousands of pieces. People wonder what kind of power this guy has because the monster didn't even have a chance to hit back. Some even think he has the highest rated hidden profession. It turns out that the secret warrior is a level 137 and has a five-star ranked hidden profession. Ning Feng is very amazed by the man's strength and agility, thinking that this is incredibly amazing. The creature from outside informs the army that the leader of the monsters has been defeated and orders them to begin the counterattack. Duan approaches to see if there is anything else he needs to do. But the protagonist replies that nothing is needed and that the warrior did a great job. The people around him don't understand why such a powerful man treats the guy with such reverence. Some even think that he is the young head of some famous family who is traveling with him. Duan then holds out the orange loot dropped from the boss to the guy and asks him to accept. And says that even if he can't use it himself, a simple random sale will earn him 10,000 crystals. Ning Feng thinks that a book of dexterity skills would be perfect for Wang Yue. As for the shield, the guy is going to sell it for good money, but later, a soldier suddenly approaches the men and asks if he can have a word with them. Then another one comes up to thank the two strong men for visiting and saving the town of Longbow. Why he introduces the mayor of this town, says his name is Kai Dong Ming, and adds that the guys don't look like locals. Ning Feng says that they originally came here on business, but didn't expect to be trapped here and couldn't leave until a certain time and then looks angrily at the mayor and asks if he knows why that is. And the mayor replies that it's because they declared a high level of warning. 
The soldier also apologizes for the inconvenience, but the guy just says it's not his fault and it's actually fine. The mayor asks the aide to go get the flight scroll he just bought and bring it over so he can make up with his boss. Fung realizes that the travel scroll is a valuable disposable item that is hard to get in their small town. It allows for convenient and quick short to medium distance travel. But then the mayor asks them to stay at least a few more days because the town is troubled and there aren't enough guards. The guy replies that he's very busy right now, so he might not be able to fulfill his request. In fact, he's just worried that he won't have time to complete the mission for the first transformation. But Kai Dong Ming is so afraid of the protagonist that he thinks he's actually very angry and starts apologizing, saying it's their fault. That's when the mayor's assistant finally brings a traveling scroll for Ning Feng. The mayor, on the other hand, holds out the gift to the protagonist, saying that it's Yang Cheng Trading's best black card, and it's just a small token of appreciation. The guy has heard that this card is only given to a very few successful people who enjoy various privileges. After taking the gift, Ning Feng is very happy and thanks Kai Dong Ming. The mayor also smiles, but thinks to himself that he is really afraid that they might turn against them. And so then the man asks if he can rely on the new boss if any danger suddenly happens in Longbow Town. The protagonist calmly replies that it won't be any problem as long as he has time. Everyone around him starts applauding, happy that the boss has agreed, which means that the town is safe. After that, the two guys head off somewhere, leaving two bright beams behind them. Meanwhile, Yue's team is waiting for her outside the profession change building. Soon, she appears with a blue-haired mage from her squad, but she is suddenly distracted by something, and the companion asks if everything is all right. The girl replies that she just saw two people flying by, and one of them appeared to her as Ning Feng. The mage starts laughing, saying that a travel scroll costs a thousand crystals, and a poor guy like that can't afford one. Yue turns on him with a furious look, and tells him that if he dares to say one more word against her friend, he better be prepared for the consequences. The man doesn't understand why she always mentions a hopeless guy like Ning Feng, and why she doesn't like him compared to this friend. The priestess interrupts them that they shouldn't dwell on irrelevant thoughts, and asks how the second transformation mission they both agreed to is going. Man reports that he has an A level, and he wishes he had reached a C, and Shieldbearer replies that this is already a very good result as only the most fortunate can reach a high level. Another member says that at the age of 18, the completion of the second transformation turns the mage into a supernova star who wants to acquire the best universities. The priestess doesn't leave Yue's attention either, asking how she handled the ordeal. However, the girl does not look happy. Her gaze is very dull and droopy, then interjecting with another team member, asking about whether it could be that the girl got a level less than average. Then the narcissistic mage starts to think about how embarrassing it must be for her. Since the genius girl faced failure in the court by her reaction, she has a low level. Then he tells Yue that she shouldn't be upset, and she just needs to practice more. And if she suddenly fails, she can always ask him for help. But the girl replies that if he's not sad about his A level, why should she be sad about her C level? The whole team is immediately very surprised by this unexpected turn of events. The priestess asks why the girl didn't tell him about it right away, but Yue senses something because her situation is different from the others. After all, her mission is to unlock a hidden profession that she hasn't heard anything about before. The magician is given how this could be possible. He's never heard of such a thing, and asks if Yue is definitely not mistaken. Then the protagonist's friend starts to remember her ordeal to change her profession. A sign appears in front of her saying that improvements to the profession have been discovered. A key item appears next to her emblem when she transfers, allowing the original profession with Archer to change to Shadow Vanguard. The girl doesn't realize what's going on, and is surprised that the interface looks so strange. Yue realizes that it's all about the gifted Vanguard emblem, it's the one that has this effect. The girl suddenly thinks that at the time he gave her the emblem he seemed quite confident, maybe he already knew everything. So she chooses to improve, and we thank her friend for such a wonderful gift. This is where her story ends, and the priestess wonders if she will be able to make random decisions. But then the magician yells that he's never heard of the Shadow of the Vanguard, and it's probably just a glitch in the system. And if she makes the wrong choice, the girl could ruin her life. To which South replies that she doesn't need the man to worry about non-affairs, and the man says he's doing it for her own good. After a few seconds, you notice that no one cares about what he says, because the rest of the team starts praising Wei and being happy for her. Then the mage thinks that he must find this emblem, no matter what it costs him, and no matter how dangerous it may be. At this time, Ning Feng obtains his cherished orange glowing emblem, after which his chest emits light and it says that the mission is 100% complete. 
He is very happy that the attributes have been greatly improved, and new skills have been added, precise manipulation of forbidden spells, for he wonders to what extent these skills can be pumped up to. Ending Feng suggests Duan to try these spells the next time he has a chance. Suddenly, Lone appears in the distance, thinking about what the fighter she recently saw is doing with the protagonist, and thinks that judging by his appearance, he is guarding Ning Feng. She also recalls that according to the intelligence report, this guy, despite being young, already possesses the fourth transformation ability. However, according to the staff, when they first entered, this fighter always followed Feng, showing a very respectful attitude. So she quickly informs Teacher Ki through the earpiece that her student is not as easy as she thinks, and adds that all the next steps now depend only on herself, and Ki replies that she doesn't need to worry about that. She believes that Ning Feng is quite a good guy, and he wouldn't be their enemy. When the guys are already outside merrily discussing and laughing about something, the main character is suddenly called out by Teacher Ki. The guy immediately asks if there's something she wanted from him when she called him earlier, and the woman says without any hesitation that there is, she wants to discuss something. Duan decides not to disturb them, and leaves them alone saying that he will wait for his boss not far away, and Qi is immediately surprised by this, as is Ning Feng. The guy decides to say that his companion is just joking around so there's nothing to worry about. The woman gets serious, asking if it's true that the protagonist has completed the first transformation. Feng is shocked at what the female teacher asked, because he was in no way prepared for such questions. Although he wasn't going to keep it a secret, he couldn't even think that it would be discovered so quickly. But Chi is one of the few people he can trust, so the guy is sure that she won't hurt him in any way. Ning Feng smilingly replies that it's true that he did finish the first transformation, but he doesn't want a lot of people to know about it because it would be very difficult to explain how it happened. The teacher then says that she has another question that might sound unthinkable, but she needs to know if it has to do with the power of darkness. The guy wonders why she's asking him these questions, and wonders if she's trying to tell him about his system being hacked. The woman informs him that due to recent anomalies happening around the world, the invasion of reality by the secret realm is increasing, and many people are becoming mutants under the influence of the power of darkness. In response, the guy only laughs again, saying that he understands, but Ki has nothing to worry about since he's not a mutant, and he himself thinks that since the authorities are keeping a close eye on mutants, he'd rather not mess with them in any way. The woman then holds out a black stone to him and tells him that if he is telling the truth, then he will be able to interact with this stone for a test. Ning Feng needs to pour his power into the crystal, which will reveal the level of the power of darkness. When the guy gets nervous, Ki realizes that her student is hesitating, which is not something he normally does. The guy says it's the first time he's encountered a situation like this and starts to get a little nervous for no reason. As soon as the protagonist touches the crystal, it shatters. Both the student and the teacher are shocked that this happened. Ning Fantasy is confused and asks Ki what's going on. The woman recalls that Solitary said that the magic crystal is extremely sensitive to the power of darkness, so the authorities often use it to detect mutants. And when the dark power comes in contact with the crystal, it starts to vibrate, and the stronger the amplitude of the shaking, the higher the level of the darkness power. But Chi wonders if someone can tell her exactly what is meant by a direct blast. The guy says that a career change right after waking up might seem like something unbelievable. But Teacher Ki has known him for a very long time, and does she not trust him? She begins to think about the fact that this guy lost his parents at a young age, and his awakening happened later than others. So it's not easy to keep such an optimistic and positive attitude. The woman informs him that she personally trusts him, of course, but it is her duty to report on today's events, and she hopes he understands. The guy, of course, goes into her position, saying that he understands everything. The guy thinks he is unsure of the reaction of the authorities, but under the inevitable circumstances, he has no choice but to leave this town. Suddenly, something glows in Ki's hand, and she says that it is for him, and the guy in turn is surprised by it. The girl holds out to him a book of purple rarity, which she presents to him as a gift, congratulating him on the successful completion of his awakening. The boy thanks his teacher for all the kindness she has shown him over the years and says he has prepared a gift for her as well. A sacred wind orange rarity belt that restores healing and stamina by 50%. The teacher is very surprised by this gift, saying that this ability to cast spells without using them directly could save several lives in critical moments. She then cries out that it's too valuable and she can't accept it, but the guy tells her that it's a reward for a career change mission, so he asks her not to refuse. He then says that his friend is still waiting, and if nothing else is needed, he will go on his way and then leaves. The woman stands there for a couple more minutes, pondering that the boy gave her a thing of orange rarity as a gift, 
and doesn't understand what's going on with Ning Feng, why she's bringing the broken stone to the adventurer's office and letting the loner and her assistant look at it. The latter takes a close look at the crystal and says that this is the first time she has encountered such a situation. Qi is afraid of what will happen if the authorities think Ning Feng is a serious threat. Singleton gets up from the table and says she thinks they should stop at this point. She says that her student has surpassed all their ideas of him. If he is truly outstanding, then they should seek to negotiate rather than provoke him. The assistant asks if they should report this, but Lone says that they should suspend the investigation on Ning Feng, and all information related to him should be strictly classified. Teacher Qi also agrees with this, thinking that after all, he is still young and doesn't have much experience in this matter, and this can be seen as his defense. Since Ning Feng doesn't want his secrets to be revealed, Lone suggests focusing on the fighter since it's time to utilize talents, and having another strong person on their side won't do any harm. As darkness falls, the protagonist and his companion are already at home, and the fighter asks his boss why he looks sad. Ning Feng replies that his teacher just wrote him a message saying that the authorities have canceled their investigation on him. Duan stares at the guy uncomprehendingly and asks what's wrong with that. It turns out he's worried about how he'll raise his level in the future, because every time he has to destroy a secret realm, it causes too much commotion. It's even gotten the attention of the authorities already. Duan thinks that Ning Feng is really a boss, because even his worries are different from ordinary people. He every time destroys the secret realm, and if he didn't see it with his own eyes, he wouldn't know how to continue this conversation. Then he asks if it wouldn't be better to upgrade him to the secret services that aren't registered by the authorities. He tells him that recently, there have been anomalies all over the world that have caused many new secret worlds to appear, and the authorities can only allocate resources to manage some of these secret worlds, while others have been taken over by evil forces. Ning Feng realizes that this could be the solution to his problem, and asks if Duan has any information about these secret worlds. He replies that of course he has everything on hand as the boss needs them, and I can find more if needed. Then he provides it to him, and thinks it's much more convenient for Duan to show up than for him as a student. And tomorrow he will go to the trading center to sell the loot and take the opportunity to rest a bit, and anyway, when using forbidden spells to increase his level, he doesn't have to worry about falling behind the other players. After a while, Duan thinks about something he didn't realize, that by the time he got back from the boss, it would be evening, so she stays at the hotel and finds a place to rent a house the next day. Duane is met by a man who suddenly greets him, to which he is very surprised. After sitting down at a table, the man introduces himself as the mayor of Kinui City and thanks him for intervening and saving people during the last invasion of the secret realm, and he wants to know if he has any plans to stay in Qingyu City. And getting the answer that Duan has some plans, the mayor says that these are awesome because they warmly welcome such strong personalities and then gives him a special adventurer's credit issued by the city that will grant him high privileges. And if he has any needs in the future, just let us know, and they will do their best to fulfill them. Duan takes the beautiful red card, looking closely at the logo. Meanwhile, Zhang Ji thinks about the fact that other cities have tried to recruit Duan, but he turned them all down. So even though their city is small, he hopes others won't look down on it. The boy studies that he accepts the gift, and he also thanks him for being so kind. They then shake hands and the mayor talks about how he too is happy that his gift is accepted. The boss might need it in the future, so it's worth keeping it for now. And the mayor thinks that with such a powerful level 4 transformation fighter, the security of his city will be even more secure. The mayor then asks if Duan is looking for a place to live, and then says that there is no need to bother, as he will deal with it immediately. Meanwhile, Ning Feng is playing a video game on his phone and suddenly notices that it's bedtime. Then he notices that despite the late hour, the people in the class group are still texting each other. He realizes that all of these classmates had awakened their powers at the age of 16 and intended to take the college entrance exam, which requires passing the first transformation or higher. And he had no idea that he could become better than them in just a few days. Here, someone of Wang Yue's fans writes that while not troubled by their powers, there are people who still play games, alluding to Ning Feng. The guy wonders why he cares about playing games. Teacher Qi appears in the group and talks about this guy in the chat room, not to harass others, and Ning Feng starts laughing from that. Then the chat room starts condemning mutants and the invasion of various cities. And then the protagonist thinks about the fact that even though the teacher and Duan told him that the world was changing, he still couldn't realize that these changes had already become so serious. He's also thinking about the fact that that guy from the last invasion escaped, he wouldn't have humiliated him.
And at this moment, some monster sneeze emits a question why he suddenly felt a sense of dread. The next day, the protagonist goes to the exchange center to finally sell everything he needs. Well, at this time in the building, a harmful counselor asks Yang Xing why someone would come to work without fully recovering from her injuries. Yang Xing replies that she's not badly injured and she's fine now. But the woman keeps up and says that she can pretend that she's fine. But what she really wants to do is go back and move up the career ladder quickly. She then adds that she can bet that her career ladder ended the moment her client turned out to be a thief who dared to attack the fourth transformation power plant, which by now has probably been destroyed beyond recognition. Young Shin exclaims that the girl is talking nonsense because Mr. Ning can't be such a person. But the woman replies that the guy named Ning Feng is a worthless person who started mastering a one-star profession at the age of 18, and his parents are long dead. He doesn't even have the ability to purchase high-level equipment. And now that the fourth transformation power has directly addressed him, isn't he just a thief? Suddenly, she is interrupted by some kind of force, thanks to which a clump appears right in front of her, terrifying the woman. It turns out that this spell was used by Ning Feng, he apologizes. But to say that her mouth is asking to be closed, and he really tried to restrain himself, but could not. The girl starts screaming how dare he use his powers in the exchange center and starts calling for security. Yang Shin asks the protagonist to leave the place as soon as possible before the guards get here, but the guy says not to worry. The girl says that the influence of the training center is not unimportant. Ordinary people can't afford to offer it at all. If they catch you, there will be trouble. That's when Mr. Wang and his guards appear on the horizon, yelling about who gave him the right to act recklessly in their center. But the guy says that he heard the man was following him and even called him a thief behind his back. However, Mr. replies that whether he is a thief or not, only he himself knows. After which he says that he has no right to question him. But Ning Feng shows his black card to ask about, so this is how he treats the guests of Yancheng Exchange Center. Mr. Wang and the female consultant are horrified that the guy has a supreme black card. She even thinks it must not be real. At this point, the protagonist realizes that this gift definitely has some significance. Wang asks where he managed to get this card. However, the guy replies that apparently he's strong in investigations, so he can go and investigate it himself. The female counselor is confused and asks what they should do. But the man calls someone and says that he will find out, and the guards should keep him under surveillance. In this, who are not letting anyone out or into the building and people are around talking to understand the reason for what is happening. Mayor Kai answers the phone and says that he was informed at headquarters that the exchange center is studying the card he handed to Mr. Ning. Well, so what's up? Confused by this information, Mr. Wang says that nothing happened, just a slight misunderstanding, and he can't understand how a simple guy could try to gain favor with Mayor Kai, whose father is one of the founders of the exchange center. But the mayor starts yelling at Wang, saying that Mr. Ning is the one he worked so hard for, and he hopes they didn't hurt him. However, realizing that Wang has somehow offended the guy after all, the mayor angrily asks who gave him that right, calls him empty-headed, and orders him to wait for his arrival. The confused Mr. Wang doesn't understand what just happened and what kind of relationship Mayor Kai and Ning Feng are in, and also doesn't understand why they are both angry. He gets the idea to call the big shot Duan from the fourth transformation and tell him that the fighter's suit has been found. And if he meets them in person, even the mayor will have to show him his face.